Hi students, as a part of uh, nanomaterials, today I am going to discuss uh, one important uh, preparatory method or synthetic method for the preparation of uh, the nanomaterials. That method which I am going to discuss today is ball milling method or it is also called as high energy ball milling method. So first let us discuss why it is called as ball milling method. This particular method is called as ball milling method because during this method either the balls made up of steel or Wolfram carbide are used to convert the bulk powder into nano materials. So that is the reason it is called as ball milling method. And this particular method is also called as a high energy ball milling method. The reason is, during this method, high energy is going to be generated due to the high frequency and a small amplitude of vibrations between the steel or the Wolfram carbide balls with the, with the particles. So that is the reason this particular method is also called as high energy ball milling method. The main objective of this high energy ball milling method or ball milling method is it is used to it is used to reduce the size of the particles. The main objective is the main objective of this method is to reduce the size of the particles. And this particular method has been designed by the scientist named as Benjamin Benjamin and his co-workers co-workers in 1960 this particular method has been designed or developed by the scientist named as Benjamin and his co-workers co-workers in 1960 and this particular ball milling method or high energy ball milling method is top down approach method. Now this is in contrast with the soul gel method. And what is the top down approach method and bottom up approach method? I have clearly explained in the video which I made on the preparation of nanomaterials by soul gel method. So please do watch that video in order to get the idea about uh, what is top down approach and bottom up approach. But do remember that this particular method of ball milling is top down uh, approach of the preparation of the nano materials. Right. Now in this particular method we have to consider the machine or the closed chamber in which the inert atmosphere is being created. Now there is a reason behind creating the inert atmosphere in the chamber or the machine during this particular method. Because this inert atmosphere will not allow the formation of undesirable products during the functioning of this particular method. So in order to avoid the formation of undesirable products, we have to maintain uh, the inert atmosphere in the chamber or the machine in which the operation, in which the preparation of uh, nanomaterial is done with the help of uh, bulk materials. Now let us see exactly what happens, what we have to do in order to convert the bulk powder into small sized Order or small particles containing powder. In order to convert uh, the bulky powder into small particles containing powder, what we need to do is first of all we have to introduce either the steel balls or the balls which are made up of Wolfram carbide into the closed chamber or the machine in which inert atmosphere is present. Now after introducing the steel balls 
or the wolfram carbide balls into the machine or the chamber. We have to introduce the bulk powder which is to be converted into the nanomaterial or whose particles are going to be reduced. So this should be introduced later after uh, introducing the steel balls or the wolfram carbide balls. Now we have to switch on the machine. When we switch on the machine, what happens is the collisions between the steel balls or old frame carbide balls takes place. Let us assume that we have introduced the steel balls. Now the collision takes place between the steel balls. Not only the collisions takes place between the steel balls, the collisions also takes place between the steel balls and the bulk powder. And uh, the bulk powder size will be around 50 micrometers. Now, due to the collisions between the steel balls and the bulk powder, whose size is in the range of 50 micrometers, friction generates. Friction creates between the balls and the bulk powder particles which is nothing but attrition. So, due to the friction, what happens? Due to the friction between the steel balls and the bulk border particles, bulk border particles, high frequency with small amplitude of vibration occurs between the steel balls and the bulk powder particles due to which high energy is being generated high energy is being generated since high energy is being generated during this particular method this method is called as high energy palm milling method which i already discussed uh, at the beginning and not only that due to the friction what happens students due to the friction some amount of heat is generated Due to the friction, some amount of heat is generated and the heat which is generated inside the chamber or the machine in which these ingredients are present. What are the ingredients present in the machine or the chamber students? The steel balls and the bulk powder particles. So due to the friction, what happens is the temperature of the chamber or the machine will be raised and the it ranges between 100 to 200 degrees centigrade. So under this, under this temperature and high energy conditions, these bulk powder particles are being crushed, being crushed into the small curved particles or smaller sized particles, are crushed into small particles. And these may be in the range of 1 to 100 nanometers. When these smaller particles which have been produced inside the chamber or machine due to the continuous friction between the steel balls and the bulk sides of particles, then the materials are called as nanomaterials. So what is happening students? During this particular method, what is happening? Some amount of temperature is raising, right? The temperature is raising in the range of 100 to 200 degrees centigrade. As the temperature is raising uh, in the range of 100 to 200 degrees centigrade, what happens? Some balls may melt. Some steel balls may melt. When the steel balls melt, now the, now the upper coat of the steel balls gets peeled off. Upper coat of the steel balls gets peeled off. And this upper coat of the steel which has been peeled off will interact with the product. Will interact with the powder comprising of smaller particles. Interact with the product. When the steel particles are interacting with the product, what will happen? The product 
is contaminated. So this is the main drawback of this particular method of preparation of the nanomaterials or any bulk material is being converted into smaller particles. This is the major drawback. And the overall process can be represented by this particular figure. Now what is happening? This is one of the steel ball and this is another steel ball. Now what is happening students? Now these steel balls are rotating along with the steel balls. Whatever the bulk powder which has been introduced into the machine is being rotated. And during this rotation, during this rotation, some amount of friction is being generated during the collisions of these uh, bulk particles and the steel particles by which uh, high frequency with a small amplitude of vibration occurs by which high energy is created by which the temperature of uh, the machine raised to 100 to 200 degrees centigrade. Now this is one of the drawback of this method is as the temperature is raising instead of getting uh, the normal product what we are getting we are getting the contaminated product. Why we are getting the contaminated product already I have explained. Now for analogy I will consider the simple example students. I will consider the simple example. Before that do remember that at moderate speed this machine or chamber in which these ingredients such as bulk powder and the steel balls should be maintained at moderate speed. Now why it should be maintained at moderate speed? So if, we, if, if uh, the machine or the chamber comprised of these two ingredients is uh, rotating slowly, then what happens? The crushing, the friction is not possible. When the friction, because this total, total method is depending upon the friction or collision between uh, the steel balls and uh, the bulk powder particles. The friction is not possible. When the friction is not possible, then uh, conversion of the bulk powder into the small particles containing powder is not possible. Is not possible right okay now why we need to maintain the moderate speed because if it is moving slowly then crushing friction is not possible or you said and if it is moving very fastly what happens is due to the centrifugal force whatever the product which is going to be formed and whatever uh, the bulk powder which is present inside the chamber will adhere to the inner walls of the machine or the chamber. Will adhere to the inner walls of the machine or the chamber. So if it is slow, then collisions are not proper. When the collisions are not proper, then friction is not proper. And as this particular method is totally dependent upon uh, the friction between the steel balls and the bulk powder particles, then the conversion of bulk powder to smaller sized or smaller powder containing the smaller sized particle is not possible. It's, it is not possible. And if it is moving at a greater speed, then what happens? Due to high speed, whatever the powder, bulk powder particles are present, they will other to the inner walls of the chamber or uh, the machine due to the centrifugal force. So for an analogy, just let us consider uh, the mixer grinder. So mixer grinder, if the mixer grinder is rotating at low speed, when the mixer grinder is rotating at low speed, whether the crushing of the ingredients is possible, so it's crushing of ingredients is not possible. And if it is rotating at high speed, what happens? Whatever the ingredients which are uh, now placed into the jar, measuring that is jar of the mixer grinder, uh, will other to they will move away from the blades of the mixer grinder jar. Will move away from the blades of the mixer grinder jar. When they are moving away from the mixer grinder jar 
what happens they will adhere to the inner walls of the jar so then the crushing is not possible so in the mixer grinder also the mixer grinder in order to crush the ingredients which are a part of the mixer grinder which are being placed in the mixer grinder for crushing you have to maintain uh, the speed of the mixer grinder at the optimum range right so this is about ball milling method uh, and a simple analogy is uh, the principle whatever the principle which is involved in the mixer grinder uh, the same principle is involved in ball milling method so I hope you understood uh, this ball milling method. So thanks for watching students. Please do comment on the video.